my dear brothers and sisters and dear viewers, we are still continuing elaborating the elaboration on the issue of violations in our Islamic homes. And uh, we talked in the last episode about uh, that the, in Islam there is a room for fun, there is a room for entertainment, and uh, we mentioned a few examples. And among these examples, the Prophet Sallallahu in one of the hadith, he raced, raced with his wife Aisha. Aisha said, I was with the Prophet Sallallahu in one of the military expeditions when we were returning to Medina, he told the army to, to advance and to go ahead. And then he told me, let us run, let us race. And she said, I said, okay. And I won the race and he kept quiet. Then he, she said, and he waited until I put on weight. And it happened again that I was with him, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And he said the same thing to the army. And he told me, come, let us race. She said, don't you see? I cannot run. He insisted, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So they raced, and the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, in the second round, the second time, he won the race. And he told Aisha, one by one. You won once, and now I won again. My turn. So here in this hadith, the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, teaches his ummah how they should be with their wives. They should have fun. They should have entertainment. Because the marital life, if it is just in one always the same pattern, it becomes monotonous. So you need to renew your marital life. There should be something to activate the marital life. So from time to time, take your sweetheart, take your wife, travel with her alone, you and her only. Maybe you can take her to Umrah. You leave the children with someone, and you and your wife, you go to the holy places, Mecca, Medina, to, for one week, two weeks, you build your iman, you strengthen the marital relation between you. This is something, I have been to many places and I found the Muslim families are in bad shape. In one of my trips, the sisters, they were telling me, we don't have romance, there is no romance. Tell the brothers that we should have this in our life, which is true, they're right. You should not neglect and ignore your obligations as a husband towards your wife. Yes, we know there is pressure in life, commitments, etc. But at the end of the day, still, she is your partner, your wife. She has rights over you. And Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he is our example. Imagine the Prophet of Allah is running, jogging with his wives in a place, no man. That's the most important thing. He told the army to go ahead. So if there is a place empty, no men are there, why not? You can have fun and you can run with your wife, etc. So this is our deen and this is the beauty of Islam. There are rules we should not forget that govern and control the entertainment in general. Number one, we mentioned this in the last episode. We should not ridicule people in order to make people laugh, so we also make other people suffer. We crack jokes about them. That's not permissible. Second rule, do not use vulgar language. A Muslim should always use a polite language, decent language, because people are listening to you. They are children. They are people who are very decent, alhamdulillah. Still, among Muslims and non-Muslims, they are decent people. They don't like hearing things that are very vulgar. So avoid that. So even when you want to say something, you have to say it in the best manner and the best way. So you have to choose. You have to be very careful when you phrase your words. Also, we should not be extravagant. Yes, Islam allows us to, to have fun and to entertain ourselves, but within the limits within the limits. We should not, this is the problem. You know the second law of Newton that says for every action there is a reaction equal in magnitude and opposite in direction? It's not only applied in physics. That rule can be applied also in things that are not tangible, immaterial. Anything when you go to the extreme, it, it backfires. It backfires. For instance, in Islam it is permissible to eat and drink, but don't go to the extreme. Kulu, Allah says, 
kulu washrabu eat and drink wala tusrifu don't go to the extreme don't become extravagant so always crossing the limit is the problem so yes you can have fun but don't be extravagant whether in spending the money or wasting time whether you spend the money you should not spend a lot of money for fun when our people are suffering people are dying and you are spending this money for your own having fun and entertainment it's not wise that's why allah azza wa jal he gives the knowledge of the deen only to whomever he loves man yuridillahu bi khairin faqihhu fi ad-din whomever allah loves he gives him the profound knowledge of understanding the deen who where you will be able to sort out your priorities for instance sister she wants to buy a pair of shoes which is very very expensive we're not saying it is haram but you might buy a pair of shoes which is less than that and the rest of money you can give it to dawa organization give it to the poor the needy the destitute etc so we have to keep that in mind always we should not become extravagant also among the rules the having fun should not affect our ibadah for instance we should not spend hours and hours and we miss our salah missing the salah is totally prohibited for instance you are playing chess the chess is halal in islam the chess is halal there are some narrations saying that it is prohibited but these narrations are not authentic narrations so the correct opinion that chess playing chess is permissible is halal but it should not lead to the to the extent that where you will miss your salah where you will miss your salah or that it was going to create create hatred among the players and all types of sports if they going to lead to create hatred and dislikeness then that's not permissible in islam we should have this sport spirit 